Thank you for tuning into this different episode of the podcast, right? Different episode yeah, of the it's, podcast. It's different, but it still fits thematically, and you'll see why soon, right? Fits thematically. Yeah, so I always, I always tell you guys, you know, go, go out, touch grass, yada, yada, yada. And the most common uh, feedback I get from that is, how? <laughs> like, you're telling me to do all these things, how? how do I do it? How do how? I go about it? Yeah, and I'm like, okay, all right, all right this, this keeps what coming. Th- what things do I do? What how grass do I, do I go touch? What grass do I go touch? Yes, so so this, this I'm showing you some grass. I'm showing you some prime grass to go touch, and um, I figure I will show you guys a hobby that I'm very into, right, that uh, you guys might be into and will probably get you some friends. Mm-hmm. It's been really good for me personally. Mm-hmm. And I think it's gonna do a lot for for you guys, right? Yeah. So, um, if you if you are a person who hold on, give me a second. Let me just get this pulled up. So, if you're a person who hates money but loves plastic, oh god. Or if you like playing the villain in any setting, do I have something for you? I'm gonna be talking about 40k today. What 40k? Warhammer 40k. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And um, I guess this is our um, this is our this is our uh, coming out story. We're secretly nerds. <laughs> secretly. <laughs> We're secretly nerds. Secretly. Anyway, right? Forty um, k. There's a lot of ways I could go about this, right? I could sit here and talk about the tabletop, its crossovers, which are they're all really fun, mm-hmm. right? But I'm not gonna sit here and like lecture you on rules because that's not what got me. What got me was the lore, right? Yeah. And that's how they get you. The fun, yeah, weird yeah, that, stories. That's the first hit, and then you're done. It's it's the lore, right? So um, we're going to start with the most popular faction, the mm-hmm. Imperium of Man, and the most uh, popular unit in that faction, mm-hmm. which would be the Space Marines. Right? Those are just the, the main guys. Yeah, they're, they're, you pick up, you look up Warhammer 40k, and it's the big guys. It's, it's, it's the dudes. Yeah, it's, it's the Space Marines. Uh, we're going to cover a bit about their pappies and mm-hmm. their grandpappies. The grandpappies yeah. and yeah, their pappies? Grandpa- yeah, 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 because that's important. Yeah. So let's set the scene, right? Mm-hmm. And it fitting on uh, It Could Be Worse right this universe is the definition it is the literal worst yeah it is the literal everything sucks it is the if there's i don't know a lot about warhammer 40k but i think the biggest thing that has been beat into my head or like learned from my own research is this is not a place where you want to live it is the definition of hell yeah it, it it's not fun no nobody who plays 40k says i would love to live there no nobody no. nobody right Mm-mm. so everything sucks and you're the bad guy. That's the fun of it, right? It's the 41st, maybe the 42nd millennium, right? And uh, humanity is a bloated empire kept afloat literally only by war. Yeah. Like, that's the one thing keeping it together. They prog- they, they make progress forward tech-wise at the same rate they forget things in the past. So for every new thing they create, they forget how to work on an old thing. That's yeah. just how it works, right? And at the center of it all is a massive corpse that requires a thousand souls a day to remain functional. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't get that... You have no way to travel in space. <laughs> like, you're done. Yeah. Right? Demons in hell are very real, and that's not even the worst thing you're going to bump into. Everyone's the bad guy. Yeah. Everyone's a villain. Except for, like, Bobby G, but, like, eh, that's neither here nor there. That's the fun of it, though. It's, it's playing the villain sometimes, right? Bobby G. Um, the fact that there's a character in this grim dark universe named Bobby G. Oh, no, that's just what the fandom call him. We'll, I mean, we'll get I get it. That. It's not his real name. Yeah, but Bobby but... G. Bobby G. Because his real Bobby name is G. so stupid. Um, anyway, but that corpse wasn't always a corpse, right? Wait, before I get into this, because it will be 40K nerds, I'm going to gloss over a lot. This, this, There's so much to 40K. There's so much to 40K. There, and you have, you have a novice 40K fan... Yeah. I won't call you a novice 40k I'm fan. Maybe deep. a little bit more than a novice. I'm in too deep. I'm in too deep. And then a Dune fanatic who knows the influences that Dune has on 40k. Here comes a Dune lecture. But but not everything about 40k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I'm gonna gloss over a lot, right? We're gonna mm-hmm. compress this a lot. And I'm sorry if I don't do uh, your favorite characters justice, or if I skip over some things. Humor will always come first, right? So this will not be the most lore accurate video possible, mm-hmm. right? You'll, so you'll just have to deal. You'll just have to deal this, with this people going. I'm um, actually, yeah, whatever. I'm um, actually, is Jesus. I know. Anyway, but that corpse wasn't always a corpse, right? He was at one point the emperor of mankind, right? He's super duper powerful guy. Yeah. Uh, there are these things called psychers, basically wizards. We're gonna boil it down a lot. They're space wizards. They're right? space wizards. And he was a big 
boy psyker. Mm-hmm. Big boy psyker. He was right? the wizardest of the wizards. Oh, yeah. Like, he was, like, 20 feet tall, like, had a sword clad in flames, wore massive golden armor, like, could look at you and turn you into juice. Right? That's a little bit more than a wizard. Yeah, like, there's a lot, right? And somehow, A little bit more than just uh, your stock wizard. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, and he was, like, effectively, and this is something that a lot of characters say, he was effectively perfect at anything he set his mind to. Mm-hmm. Like, if he set his mind to build the best fortress possible, he will do it, right? But he had two problems, right? Number one, he can't be everywhere and do everything all at once. Mm -hmm. He may be able to do anything he sets his mind to, but he has to set his mind to it. Mm -hmm. And he has to set his mind to it here. Mm -hmm. Which means there's a hundred other things that he has to fix, Mm -hmm. right? So to to fix that first problem, he created 20 sons, right? Mm -hmm. These are superhumans that embody like total mastery over one part of him, right? Mm -hmm. So like, for example, Horus, right, is complete mastery of the assault. Mm-hmm. He like nobody can lead a war better than him. He can grind any fortress to dust. Yeah, right. That's him. On the other hand, there's Dorn, complete mastery of defense. Nobody can build this f- a fortress like him. Yeah, like literally, like uh, it's something that's said by Horus that if Horus and Dor- Dorn would ever go to war, it would never end. It'd just be the infinite the fight. Be- the best of assault versus the best of defense. This just wouldn't end, right? Mm-hmm. So, so they each of these sons got like a little bit of the emperor, right? And um, that was his shtick. It's like, oh, these mm-hmm. 20 will go do stuff. Well, I do stuff. And effectively, we'll all be better for it, right? But then before they could get to work, uh, chaos, which is hell for all intents and purposes, right? It's, yeah, it's, got, it's just hell. Yeah, got wind of this and scattered them to the winds. Literally, like, and just threw them out into the universe, right? Mm. And this was before, like, you can travel faster than light. Yeah. So, like, the emperor took a while to find them all. Mm-hmm. He had to slowly conquer a planet and be like, eh, no. Are you there? None of hey, your, kiddo, where you be? None of them are 15 foot tall yet, so not here, right? Mm-hmm. So, we're going to gloss over a lot again. He did it, though, finally, and he reunited everything. You know, it was all well and good. Everybody mm-hmm. was working. Humanity was improving. It wasn't quite at its peak. Mm-hmm. But it was doing really good. Yeah. Really good. And then his second fatal flaw began to rear its head. Hmm. He's an awful father. Mm. He's such a bad dad. Mm-hmm. He's like he he gives Vader a run for his money. He's that bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's so bad. Well, I mean, to be fair, his kids did get dragged away from him. No, but it's unexcusable. You'll see why later. But like, he's a bad mm. dad. So he's not just like incidentally absentee. Honestly, there's there's a lot of theories that it's deliberate. But um, yeah, oh, like so- he asked chaos to do it? No, 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 no. He's just like he's so bad; it has to be on purpose. There's no way he's mm. this stupid, right? But mm. anyway, um, because he's such a bad father, um, it, his sons, ten of them, split away from him, mm-hmm. right? And they're like, no, dad, you're wrong. We're gonna we're gonna go with chaos. They're they're right, right? Mm-hmm. And they lead this whole big like civil war, basically called the Horus Heresy. You can guess who was the first one to split from that one. Yeah, I can figure yeah, it that was out. Horus, right? It's very huge war breaks up. It is terrible for the Imperium. A lot of Primarchs die, mm-hmm. which takes a lot for a Primarch to die. That's what his sons are. They're yeah. prim- Primarchs, right? Yeah. So it's the Emperor, Primarchs, Space Marines, right? Direct yeah. to Space Marines? Uh, that's that's kind of how it works. It goes like the Emperor created these sons to be like a reflection of him, but like weaker. Like mm-hmm. it's not a full emperor, but it's like he's really good at that. These thing. are like shades of him. And then and then the the space marine legions are reflections of the reflection. Mm. So like like uh, an iron fist, right, will never be as good as his uh, primarch, right? Mm-hmm. But his primarch will also never be as good as the emperor if he sets his mind to it. You kind of see how this goes, mm-hmm. right? But they're still like way better than people. Like even space marines are like ten feet tall with like two hearts, three lungs. Like mm-hmm. it's a lot. It's a lot, and they're yeah. like kind of they get bodied kind of frequently. Right? Even the space marine? Oh yeah. Oh, it's actually sucks. no. I do know it what kind of sucks. things are in this universe. Yeah. It's not a fun universe. It sucks. So yeah, they they split into two two lines, and you're gonna hear me say this a lot. One, some are loyalist primarchs, and some are traitor primarchs. Mm-hmm. You can figure out why they split there, right? Loyal ones stayed with the emperor. Mm-hmm. Traitors did I, the whole I can heresy thing, right? Yeah. And um, basically, the imperium was split asunder. A lot of worlds died, and uh, it ended with Horus dead. And uh, the emperor interred on that golden throne as a corpse, basically. Mm-hmm. And he needs a thousand souls a day to keep him running, right? And without him, he's like a lighthouse. You can't travel without him. He's like the um, he's like the spacing guild in Dune. Sure. If they go away, then no more travel. Mm-hmm. So with an actual library skipped over, that mm-hmm. is the horse heresy, like just so much, right? An Let's actual. get yeah, an actual library. Let's okay, again, that, I, I think I've told you this. That that's the one thing I will respect. Um. Uh, Warhammer 40k fans for you 
You read. We read. You people we read. We read books on books on books. Each Primark in and of themselves is like a main character of a series of books. Mm -hmm. Like that. that's a fleshed out character, mm -hmm. right? And there's 20 of them. And their dad. And their enemies. Yeah. And this is one faction. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Like I know, again, Dune Fanatic. There's mm -hmm. books on like every house mm -hmm. in the... the, the in the series mm -hmm. every like ruling faction and every historical event mm -hmm. i haven't read through all of them but mm -hmm. it's not enough to qualify a library yeah yeah um and so you now know like biggie the emperor right primarchs his 20 sons and then the space marines who are a reflection on that right mm -hmm. um so you're, you're like watering him down with every step and you really shouldn't un underestimate the emperor because even if it's like a watered down watered down watered down version mm -hmm. i'd still never want to meet one no <laughs> none of them right so they're organized into legions, and we'll get to the first legion, mm -hmm. right? Um, these are known as the Dark Angels. It's our first loyalist chapters. They stuck with the Emperor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, their Primarch is a guy named Lionel Johnson, and he's paranoid. Mm -hmm. He's if you if you go up to Lion and whisper, Psst, you see those kids in that sand pit over there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of them has a knife. Oh, he it, will glass the sand pit. Oh, he'll nuke it. He won't even he won't even check. He'll just nuke it and move on. He'll just say, oh. Crisis averted. Knife? No. <laughs> Crisis averted, right? Mm -hmm. He is always willing to go scorched earth, and there's no situation he's unprepared for. Mm -hmm. Like, he is paranoid. He'd rather overkill than be caught unprepared, mm -hmm. right? Um, this means that, like, in one-on-one -on -one combat against any of his brothers, he's pretty much going to whoop him. Yeah. Like, there's a few who stand a very good chance and could actually win, but mm -hmm. against most of them. You don't want to fight the lion. He just has a preparation. He's like Batman. He's got a a a, a, contingency a thing for, contingency. for everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the lion is like, it's you don't want to fight him. Um, think of him as a ticking time bomb with a really, 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 really long fuse. How's he a ticking time bomb? Like he when he gets mad, mm -hmm. oh, it's a whole problem. Mm. But 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 it takes a lot. Like he's very well restrained and all that, but if something yeah. peeves them off, ho, ho, they're done. Yeah, they're done. They're done, right? Um, but he's also like really mentally strong. Like I was saying, it takes a lot to piss him off because as a kid, he where he, where he wound up when chaos scattered them was a mm -hmm. forest full of horrific monsters. Mm. And um, fun fact about Primarchs, they don't turn on unless people are there. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing that the Emperor built in so that chaos couldn't use them fully. Mm -hmm. So basically. He, they're not like full blown demigods. He was effectively mm -hmm. just a kid who could heal pretty quick. That's all. Mm. And yeah, he survived in a in a in a force full of demons and just monsters for years, mm -hmm. and came out just fine. Like people found him, and it was just this kid who just killed these things, and they're like, "Uh, uh why? Are you, that's oh, that's not your blood you're covered in." They genuinely thought he was a demon at first because like there's nothing else that could have survived. Yeah, but the people he was found by are on this planet of like real Knights of the Round Table kind of thing, mm -hmm. and they named him like Lionel Johnson, right? So Johnson, yeah, Johnson, yeah, that's Johnson, yeah, Johnson, Johnson and Johnson's baby, Lionel Johnson, right? <laughs> And so, and so, he's he's like I, one of the most mentally strong Primarchs. Not many have gone through what he did as a kid. Yeah, he's fine, right? But he's not perfect. He's uh, like on the spectrum. There's no two ways about it. Mm. <laughs> like he got the he he got the he's got a massive ego. Mm. Like 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 he's got a massive ego, bigger than all of his other brothers, basically. Like, he genuinely thinks he's better than all of them mm -hmm. because, it, like, he genuinely thinks he could best any one of them if he set to his mind to it. And that's what he thinks of, like, other demigods, effectively. Mm -hmm. Imagine what he thinks of other people. Yeah. And on top of that, he didn't get any of the Emperor's social graces. So he's, like, um, what's the, the term? Like, empathy, non-empathetic. Uh, yeah. I can't remember, he's like, the technical term for it, but, like... Not a lot of empathy going on. Yeah, so kind so, of um um uh, an Abed from Community kind of situation. Well, yes, but imagine if Abed was like almost twenty feet tall and yeah like, yeah 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 he yeah, earned yeah. it mm -hmm. right. So like you have this guy who's just like you're saying Abed doesn't earn his his ego not as much as the line no. <laughs> Abed's great. No, I love Abed. So so because of that lack of social awareness and the fact that he can back it up because he's like scary competent, right? <laughs> Um, it leads to this infuriating combination that everyone hates. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, God, I hate him, but he's <coughs> probably right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, God, I hate him, but he's probably right. Yeah. Right. His paranoia is also a pretty big problem because he won't tell any of his own friends his plans. Mm -hmm. Right. He'll like, just kind of do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like right now in 40K, he's still alive. 
a lot of the Primarchs didn't make it out of the Hoyersi. Like right now, he's alive mm-hmm. and in a coma of sorts, like his like t- uh, in his castle, right? Mm-hmm. But nobody in the Imperium knows this mm. because you know those Space Marines are a reflection of their father, their Primarch, right? Yeah, they're just as paranoid as he is, so they won't tell anybody that he's alive. Yeah, so they just kind of have him in the basement, like uh, nobody can find out, nobody can find out, nobody can find out. So they have a way to bring back Primarchs, and they don't know the Lion's asleep. Yeah. Wait, they don't even know he's there, or no, 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 no. His space marines do. Nobody else does because mm. they're just so paranoid about it, right? Mm. Like if they just would mention that, the lion would be up and taking names again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a, it's a whole problem, right? Mm-hmm. But aside from the like infuriating tendencies, if you're like King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table vibe, yeah, like they, they're like they're named Azrael, Merlin, like they have that going on oh they're nerds in a nerdy universe well and then the armor is like styled to look like a medieval knight but they have like a massive chain sword or like an electric sword right God, so if, they, how does that work because i've seen space marine armor how does that that's not at all like knight inspired no 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 but they 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 you can style your armor mm. like if you look up um if you look up the first legion's armor you'll see it's it's very it's very like knights of the round table right so if you want to do that or if you simply feel like you're just better than everyone around you, this is the Legion for you. And he's alive, like I said, in in and playing Sleeping Beauty, basically, is what mm. he's doing, right? Uh, the second Legion. Uh, huh. I thought I wrote this down, but I guess I must have left it out. Mm. Eh, not important. Probably don't exist. Third Legion, right, is uh, the Emperor's Children, mm-hmm. right? And uh, it's our first traitor re- legion. They're led by Fulgrim, right? Fulgrim. Yes. And his whole shtick is he's so hot. He's so hot. Is he's, he like a D&D bard character type? He's, no, like he's canonically absurdly hot. Like, like, basically effectively a war twink. That is effectively what he is. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, in, in all of his books, they mention this at least five times. They're just like, he was so attractive. Yeah, no, like, it, it feels like a self insert almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and, but he's also like an absolute perfectionist, right? Mm. Like, because he's so damn good looking, right? He, like, everything must be perfect. Everything must be perfect, right? So mm. his units will arrive in perfect formation with every spire polished with the highest and tallest spires, right? And, like, art that they painted themselves, like, like, their armor is like good looking they mm-hmm. are just pristine flawless in everything even they're fighting how like, are they not the elf inserts then oh the elf inserts are a whole different thing but like like to give you context other primarchs are thinking on their feet they're like move here move here move here mm-hmm. they practice for every single occasion and they think of it as a dance mm. it's it's just a show for them yeah so they're really good at one-on-one but the problem is when the emperor found him right um unlike his other brothers who are like hey here's an entire legion of hundreds of thousands of space marines right he found him and said hey uh they got like 10 in the back Mm. (laughs) good luck right and so you have this perfectionist who's trying to keep up with his other brothers because they all got sent out to crusade right yeah and he's really good but he has like a tenth of what they have Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter if they're worse than him they're just doing more yeah because they just have so much more yeah so those brutal brutal standards right um or what drove him towards chaos Mm -hmm. right and specifically towards slanesh we're gonna skip all of that right (laughs) slanesh Slanesh is effectively if the hub gained sentience and was a deity (laughs) yeah i know about slanesh we can't really um yeah Yeah. that's a that one's a patreon episode that's a patreon episode (laughs) literally that's a that's a youtube will um Mm-hmm. YouTube will uh, uh, smite us yeah. with, with their godlike powers. So, so, so that pushed him towards Slanesh, right? And they became these awful mutated beings of just excess that don't represent like Biggie or his dreams at all, right? Mm-hmm. Um, before that, though, right? Before it's not all bad. He was a pretty cool dude, actually. Mm-hmm. He was liked by pretty much all of his brothers, unlike the lion, who everybody hates. Yeah. Even Conrad Kurz, who we'll get to later, but so paranoid. Yeah. Even more paranoid than the lion, right? Um, so if you like that perfectionist vibe or just like taking a dial and turning it up to 24, right? Mm-hmm. Or just have unrealistically high standards for yourself. These are the ones for you, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Fulgrim is alive right now as a painting. As a painting? Or a snake demon. Don't ask. 
so he's either the big snake from Sekiro or he's the painted world from any of the Dark Souls. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. The fourth legion, known as the Iron Warriors, uh, and their primarch is Perturabo, or Peter Turbo. Peter. Peter Turbo, right? You uh, guys come up with a weird name. For it's your... better than saying Perturabo. That's such a Perturabo. terrible name. Anyway, it's not that hard. This is our second traitor legion, and he is just the most, Perturabo is the most petulant. That's what I said unlikable man child mm-hmm. right he like just an incel in every way yeah he's just whining and complaining and blames all his problems on everyone else so he hates his brother he's me yes <laughs> like like he he he's molding even with the brothers who joined him in chaos he's like i hate you guys too yeah why'd you join me mm-hmm. i wanted to be here alone no, why'd i join you i just wanted to be alone right mm. but he's likable for one reason and one reason alone Hmm. He's really competent. Mm. <laughs> He's like really competent, right? Like Horace may be like the mind behind the heresy mm-hmm. and the one who started it, but uh, Mr. Peter Turbo is its beating heart, mm. right? Like he is industrialism like at its finest. Everyone in his legion is a forge master. They trap machi- demons in machines just to use them later for sieging. Mm. They use tanks, machine guns, heavy armors. It's just machinery made man. And they can build like the most unassailable like fortresses with machines. Yeah, he's just he's just good at mm-hmm. his job. And and again, to be fair to Mr. Peter Turbo, right? Mm-hmm. He doesn't have the best hand of all the Primarchs. This is why some people think Biggie did this on purpose. Mm. Like he was born as a kid with the ability to see into the eye of terror, which is effectively so. There's the warp, which we'll call hell for all intents and purposes, mm-hmm. right? And uh, there's our universe, and they're like layered together, like but they're not quite touching, right? So so it's just like it's a parallel dimension kind yeah. of deal. So you yeah. can like poke the fabric and it like poke out on the other end, but like mm-hmm. and it'll cause weird shenanigans. Mm-hmm. But like it's really hard to get through, right? Mm. The eye of terror. It's like a do- like you step through the eye of terror, you're in the warp. Mm. So it's like a direct portal to hell. So like you, you could can, just see into hell. You can see the horrors of hell, and he could just from birth look to the sky and go. Hmm. Mm. And if he closed his eyes to go to bed at night, it was always there. Oh, so that 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 kid <laughs> had like super PTSD, <laughs> right? Right, and then and then on top of all that, when the emperor found him, right, mm-hmm. instead of like ah my son, here's your legion, I love you so much, right? He was like he gave him the worst jobs. He gave him the worst it's Just jobs. like, oh, great. You're the most competent of everybody? Mm-hmm. Mop the floors. No, he told him to go fight the Harud. I don't which, know um, what that the is. The Harud, think of it as jellyfish wearing rags, but they have deep understanding of technology. They're one of the few races in the universe who still do. Mm-hmm. So if you leave any machines lying around, they're like, take it apart, learn how it works, build more of it, and make it better. So they're the Mechanicus if the Mechanicus were competent. Yes. And, okay. they, and he and the Emperor sent... A man who only knows how to build machines against them. Mm. Do you see why people are like, oh, he did this on purpose? Yeah. He's, he's not this stupid, right? He just and- said, <laughs> Father, why must you give me your most difficult challenges? Because you are my silliest clown. Yeah, you are my silliest clown. That's what per- Perturabo. <laughs> he's the silliest clown. <laughs> he's the emperor's silliest clown, right? Ugh. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Perturabo fans are going to be pissed. <laughs> Our warriors are going to be pissed, but yes, he's he, the emperor treated him as the silliest clown. And mm-hmm. if you think sending a man who knows only how to build machines against a race that knows how to take apart machines and do them better mm-hmm. isn't smart enough, being around the Harud is terrible. Mm. Not only are they weird, gross, fleshy, like jellyfish monsters wearing rags, um, they put out this field around them that bends time faster. Mm. So fighting a Harud for five minutes, you are now 50 years older. Ah, and when there's a bunch of them together, it's like an entire planet. So Perturabo effectively fought for thousands of years and is just... I'm tired. Oh, and then, and then, and then on top of that, <laughs> the Harad also put out agony-inducing poison mm. that makes you dependent on being around them by breathing it in. Yeah, so this sucks, and breathing sucks, but now I can't help but be around you. It's an abusive relationship. Props to the Warhammer 40k writers. You did a great job at, like, making the weirdest, like, cosmic horror kind... Well, not even cosmic horror, just, like, this sucks. Mm -hmm. Like, because cosmic horror you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the point of this. You know how it works. Mm -hmm. It just sucks. Oh, and then, and then, and then, on top of all that about the Harad, they're, like, always moving through time. So if you kill one... No, you didn't. Oh. And then... So they're timey-wimey jellyfish. On top of all that, mm-hmm. they come in peace. 
They literally sent a warning to the first ship the emperor sent in and said, hey, uh, you don't want this smoke. <laughs> mm. Just turn around. You don't want this. And mm. then they kept going. And then they killed them. And then the emperor was like, Peter Turbo. Take care of him. My silliest clown. My silliest clown. Go in my funniest battles. <laughs> so he basically sent him against an enemy who counters him perfectly in a war that he can never win, where he will always be in agony. Mm. And then you wonder why he's so unlikable. Yeah. Right? But... Like, he, while he has his reasons, he never did anything about it. Mm. In his spare time, he never tried to build the machines he actually wanted to. Because mm-hmm. he doesn't want to build machines of war. He wants to build, like, fun machines. Mm. But, like, no, he was always just mauling. He's like, meh, he wants me to build a machine He's gun. Gonna, Fine, I'll, I'll build, build a machine, machine gun. gun. Right? So he, he always, he kind of did it to himself, right? And mm. suffered in silence until he snapped and went to chaos, right? But if you like big industry, tanks, machine guns, power armor, or just being petty all the time, this is the Legion for you, right? Perturabo is currently alive, molding in the warp with some of the coolest art. Like, every every single bit of art of him mm-hmm. is like him as a massive, like, he went full machine lord. It's so cool. Mm. It's so cool. I might like him. It's man. annoyingly cool for Mr. Peter Turbo. Um, fifth, uh, this is Jagatai Khan, right? Um, he's, he's an interesting one. Because of all the Primarchs, he's the one who... He's one of the ones that doesn't fit in a lot, mm-hmm. and it was because he he really embraced where he landed. Mm. He embraced he landed in this like uh, steps kind of environment, mm-hmm. right? Or step? I've never never known how steps. To, steps. Okay, yeah, that kind of environment where it's like it's kind of nomadic, but not really, right? Yeah, and a lot of the 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 culture there is kind of like Taoist influenced mm-hmm. and Confucianist. So, so it, it's it's like tundra y kind of a uh, uh, yeah uh, yin yang kind of uh, yeah yeah. And so and so he he's he's a very quiet and stern man. He mm-hmm. never smiles and never laughs, basically, right? Yeah, and he's he just real quiet, right? Mm-hmm. But he's contemplative. He's yeah, he's mindful. Yeah, but he's fully capable of being charismatic. Yeah, like like he can. He's he's pretty likable. He can bellow and laugh and be as powerful as he needs to be. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. But uh, because of this environment he was raised in, right, instead of being the strict regiment that like everyone else is, mm-hmm. he's pretty laissez faire about it. Where it's like he he has him and then his chapter masters, mm-hmm. and they're given a lot of free reign. Mm-hmm. He's like, I wouldn't put you here if I didn't trust you. Go for it. Mm. Right. So. So he really, he does think like his home world, Chagoras is what it's called, right? Mm. Is like the best way to do it. And he kind of hates emperors. Like he, he spent a lot of his time there just killing emperors, right? Mm. Except for, except for Big E. They always had like a weird relationship, right? Mm-hmm. But um, one of the things he said is if, if, um, if the emperor ever like tried to prevent what he's doing, yeah. he'd, he'd just turn. He'd just turn. So like he's loyalist, but like eh. he's loyalist, but like kind of um he's he he's the closest to being like almost true neutral of all of them. Where mm. it's like I won't be chaos, I won't be. It's like eh, right? Well, I mean, if he's like Taoist inspired, I'm wondering like how much of like um how much Eastern philosophy the writers wrote because that's kind of a a a thing. I'm like very middling on my understanding of like uh, Taoist and Eastern philosophy, but like one of the big tenets is like. Mm-hmm. F- be mindful focus on you mm-hmm. and uh you know do the things for the good of humanity mm-hmm. not for the good of whoever's above you mm-hmm. yeah so yeah. I mean, so it could be some of that um he's also like really hates stagnation he hates just sitting still he's mm-hmm. like, super gotta go fast like not yeah. only is it just gotta go fast in combat but he likes always being in motion Mm. And he hates taking the easiest path, right? Mm-hmm. So he always rejects the path most traveled, right? And um, will always, like, a comp- he's, it's almost compulsive for him. He has to keep yeah. moving, right? He's just like me, for real, for real. <sighs> yeah. So he's always moving. He's always improving, right? And if that's something that sounds appealing to you, that kind of Taoist philosophy, right? Um, or if you're just, like, hitting things real fast and real hard, the white scars are for you, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the Khan is probably alive right now. He was last seen when a bunch of dark elder, basically elves, but with frowny faces painted on them. Elves, but but mean. Yes. But mad. Yeah, but but mm. mad, yeah. Um, well, they raided his home world, and he just sped into, like, their webway, which is, like, their, the way they travel intergalactic. It's the internet. Yeah. No, no, no. The way they travel intergalactically. It's, like, they're fast travel portals, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so he's, it, it, yeah, it's he's currently travel. speeding around in there and just slaughtering them. That's the last time we saw him. Oh. Mm-hmm. So he's just... So he could be dead in the webway, but, like, he's probably not. Mm. Right? Like it takes a lot to kill a Primarch. If you've noticed, yeah. none of the ones we've covered so far have been dead. Yeah. It takes a lot. They're like huge. They're big boys. Okay. The sixth legion is the Space Wolves with their Primarch Lehman Russ. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, he's a loyalist with big Viking energy. I mean, 
Viking energy? Because from, from what I've been told by you specifically, they're furries. They're, it, that's the running gag. But it's also they go ah woo when they go into battle. <laughs> okay. They they bark at their enemies. Oh jeez, it's not that bad. <laughs> but um, but it is like big Viking energy. Like they they have like mead halls and feasts and like mm -hmm. like for example when Lehman was found by the emperor, right? He was like a king in like a hall having a feast, and the emperor was like, hey, "Join me." And most other primarchs go. Listen, I'm like 15 feet tall and like built like a brick house mm -hmm. and no other human ever has been built like this. Clearly you're my dad cuz you're like 20 feet tall and built like a bigger a bigger brick house. Mm -hmm. Right? But like he was like, "No. Beat me in some contests first." <laughs> and the emperor was like, "Uh, okay. Did Choose he did they do the, the 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 fifteen foot tall like Highland games like kind of because Lehman Russ was like like he, the emperor said fine choose some games I guess because he's the emperor he's like I can I can whoop you I'll any day you're, you're, games, you're, you're so. nothing you're, you're 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 nothing I'll whoop you any day right and so first he picks um an eating contest right mm -hmm. and the emperor just like shovels food at an absurd rate mm -hmm. and Lehman's thought process here is I don't want to ruin my feast I came here to eat mm -hmm. so his first thing is let's eat. So the, the emperor like is shoveling food at a rate nobody else ever could, mm -hmm. and like he clears an entire table that's meant for like twenty large warriors, mm -hmm. right? And the emperor's like smug and he looks to his right. Lehman Russ has eaten everything. <laughs> he went to the kitchen. <laughs> like Lehman Russ, he is... cooked some extra for himself. And the emperor's he was, like, he was still hungry. And the emperor's like, Ugh, okay, what's your second challenge, right? And um, they're like, all right, drinking contest, right? And to give God, you he is like just yeah. a Viking. To give you contest, space marines can't get drunk. They're effectively drinking poison. Like, there's a stomach before the stomach that they mm -hmm. have that's meant to filter out poison. Mm -hmm. They're drinking something that would like chew through your jaw, basically, yeah. if you drank it. Mm -hmm. And so the emperor's like, <sighs> okay, sure, mm -hmm. let's have our drinking contest. The emperor like is downing barrel, barrel, barrel. Mm -hmm. He gets like. 40 deep, right? Mm -hmm. Of full caskets. Yeah. Right? Of barrels. Caskets? He, you mean casks? Casks, not casks. caskets. Sorry. You yeah. said caskets. Yeah, yeah. Casks of, 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 of uh, effectively poison. This isn't right? Dune. They're not drinking from the death stills. Yeah. And so stop with the Dune, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so he, he does like 20 barrels deep, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, you can't. You can't. This would, this would literally kill any of you. You can't. Mm -hmm. And he looks over to his left, and Lehman Russ has finished everything in the hall. And everything in the nearby town. Mm. Like, there's no more for the emperor to drink. He even drank it all. Yeah. In, in the same time. And the, the emperor's, like, actually pissed now. He's like, he's okay, like, listen, fuck? you're just a drunk who likes to eat. Fight me. <laughs> and Lehman Russ is like, all right, bet. And he gets milli rocks. <laughs> he gets... <laughs> like, the emperor is, like, so pissed. He, he was, like, kind of, like, dressed as a beggar, kind of. Mm -hmm. Like, a huge guy. Yeah. But, like, kind of humble, right? Mm -hmm. He, like, completely shed the cloak, sword on fire. Like, mm -hmm. he was, like, full-blown, like, I will I will, whoop you. I will beat the brakes off you, kid. Stop it. Right? <laughs> and so he proceeded to, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, Lehman, after sitting there being bloodied, drunk, and full, he's like, oh, yeah, you're my dad. <laughs> and he joined him immediately. Like, no hesitation. He's like, yeah, you're my dad. There you go. I figured it out. I figured it out, right? He's so stubborn. That ties it. Like, like, not only did he fight the emperor himself, none mm -hmm. of his other brothers did that except for, like, you know, the, the traitor ones, right? Mm -hmm. He fought Magnus, another Primarch, mm -hmm. Angron, another Primarch, mm -hmm. the Lion, another Primarch, mm -hmm. and Horus. He's so stubborn. He just said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. My way or the highway. Like, he has serious issues with valuing other people's opinions unless you beat them into him. And then he's like, mm -hmm. oh, fine. fine. You're stronger, I guess. You it, make more sense. It may be because the emperor in his infinite wisdom chose to give him part dog DNA. Oh, that's he, why he that's actually why has he, canines. That's yeah. why he barks. And he has like full blown, like he has like like full canines and stuff. But, does, does he have the ears? No, but it's but tail? as a neat thing, he has massive wolves that follow him around. Just like I mean, like like wolves that look big compared to him. So like, I hate saying this, like the Twilight Wolves, where they're the size of like two. People. Yeah, no, they're 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 massive wolves, right? And a lot of his legion are, like has like a lot of like dogs with them, like wolves, right? Yeah. Um, so he has, he has he has a high opinion of himself in his legion because he feels like he's earned it, mm -hmm. right? And to be, yeah, he's, kind of, he's kind of earned it. He's kind yeah, of yeah. He's guy. just like I fought for this. I earned this. You know, this but, is my thing. And to prove like once once you beat an idea into his head, he will stick with it. He's the most willing of all of them, or at least he was, to like cross any line for the emperor. Mm. Like if the emperor told him just like commit genocide, he'd be like, sure, okay, sure, uh, I'll end the system, whatever, right? Mm. And so to be fair, I've heard that's not difficult to do. Yeah, but in there's the still a lot universe. of yeah, but there's moral hangups. People still have feelings sometimes. 
Sometimes. It's forty k. Do they care about the moral the morality of this situation? They, they'll question it. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been a whole, a whole heresy about it, mm. right? So he also has some of the hardest quotes in battle of any Primarch, like "bark bark." No, woof woof. No, a like, woo. Like in combat, he'll yell, "Here I am, and here I'll die." <laughs> yeah, and um, one of the last things he was he was um like his chapter recorded him saying right was uh listen closely brothers because my last breath is all but spent there shall come a time far from now when our chapter is dying even as i'm dying right and our foes will gather to destroy us then i will listen for your call whatever realm of death i'm in that holds me i will show up no matter what the laws of life and death forbid in the end i will be there for the final battle so he's just the man too angry to die that's anger but like he, he kind of yeah Right. So after the heresy, so he's the man too dedicated to fight, to yeah. die. Yeah. Like I, he, me dead couldn't be me. That's if, what he if says. He, if he if he if he dies, he'll just hit the Uno reverse card and go yeah. no. Later on, after the heresy, he decided to become his own man mm-hmm. and kind of like just protect people. Just kind of be generally a good guy, protect people in the Imperium, right? And uh, he's also did a good job of curbing some of the more. Um, unsavory traits of the space wolves because mm-hmm. they, they they all have that kind of canine thing like they they, they will eat people yeah oh. so he's, he's very good at like wrangling that right it's like no mm-hmm. no that's phil yeah. we like phil yeah leave phil alone yeah so if you like being a berserker you like that kind of like viking vibe you like big wolves you're a cannibal um like th- those kind of inspirations and uh lehman russ is, is the way for you so he's probably dead um, like they found his armor in a shrine to corn, which mm-hmm. is a war god. That's never, it's never good. However, he's so stubborn mm-hmm. that when he says he'll be back, no matter the laws of life and death, it's very possible. He might just like, like literally when somebody says Lehman Russ will be back, everyone's like, yeah, the tracks. Uh, seventh Legion mm-hmm. is the Imperial Fists. The Imperial Fists. They are, this one, my favorite. Is legions. it just a bunch of disembodied 15 foot tall fists? We'll get to the disembodied fists later, but that does play a part, actually. There are actually disembodied fists. Yeah, no, actually. They are, they are, like, estimate. the most loyalists. Mm. Like, they are loyal to the bones they write on, right? Bo- oh, okay. They, like, scrimshaw on bones. It's, like, their thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, So, um. Their the, own, or just Yeah, they're the Fallen the fallen usually. okay so just like oh there's a bone there pick it up no no, no like of their of their own chapter uh, ah yeah, 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 okay yeah, yeah. um so their primarch is rogel dorn we mentioned him earlier he's a master of defense mm. like he's so immovable the emperor chose him to build this para- palace mm-hmm. on terra mm-hmm. which oh god that upset peter Arbo. peter turbo Ugh. that upset peter turbo to he's know. Just like no i'm the best at machines no i'm the best at building let me build let, let me, me build. build it i yeah. want to build it but peter a baby anyway so that's neither here nor there um, and is the Primarch to have fought with the Emperor the most. Mm. Like, that's how much the Emperor respected, like, his skill in combat. Mm. He was like, you'll be my right-hand man. Mm. Right? Which is saying a lot because there's a guy who's good at war. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, once his Legion finds a space they want to hold, that's it. They, it won't fall. It's it's. Theirs. It will not fall and neither will they. Yeah. Right? However, like, the walls they build, they're real dense. Mm. And real blunt, right? Dorn? Will never lie to you. Mm. Ever. Right? Mm-hmm. Which, funnily enough, is why him and Alpharius don't get along. We'll get to him way later. right? Okay. Because Alpharius... Alpharius literally says, I don't like Dorn. He never lies. How can I trust him? <laughs> Alpharius is great. Right? But, um, yeah, he will never lie to you. If you ask him that dre- if that dress makes you look fat, he'll say yeah. <laughs> and, and, and... Because they don't, they're not polite. They don't couch things very nicely. Mm-hmm. He won't just tell you that dress looks fat. He'll tell you you've also gained cankles in about 40, 40 pounds since we got married. <laughs> and like it's all facts. And it's like, ah, why are you telling me this, right? Mm-hmm. If you screw up, he won't berate you. He'll just tell you factually what you did wrong. He'll just be like, okay, so mm-hmm. um, A, B, C, D. The dinner was undercooked. The chicken was raw on one side. I don't know how you managed to ruin cooking rice, but good on you. The floor, like, like, like. He- no, you'll ask him for a criticism on, like, a meal, and he'll pull out, all right, uh, section one, uh, s- uh, subsection A, oh, no, that's part more, B. That's more Gillum, and he's the guy with sections and subsections. He'll okay. just tell you why you're wrong, mm. and you can't debate it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, no sugarcoating. Like, when he first got his legion, he didn't. He just observed them in combat for a mm-hmm. bit. He just like watched them fight, and then he came up to each and every one of them and was like, "This is what you did wrong. This is what you did wrong. This is mm-hmm. what you did wrong." Right? And because they're like him, they're like, "Yes, Dad. 
<laughs> thanks, Dad. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Except for one where he looked up, he went, he went up to him, right? Made solid eye contact, moved on. And that is the highest praise of Dorn. Mm. He had nothing. He had nothing wrong to say. He had about nothing you. to say. Mm-hmm. He just. Well, I mean, actually, and that, that guy's would, our chapter master now. That would be a perfect compliment because that's just like I have nothing to say. You're perfect. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep it going. Keep keep it pushing. You're doing great. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, they also believe in discipline, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Like if you give them a task, they will just get it done. It doesn't matter how unpleasant the task is. So unlike Percherabo, when I have to fight the Harad. When Dorn will just say, okay. Okay, whatever. And just do it, right? Like, if you tell Dorn, here's a spoon, hollow out Everest, and then reinforce it, he'll just, okay. okay. And then he'll do it better than anybody else. Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't believe in cutting corners. He's like, do it right or don't at all. Mm-hmm. Right? So, um, and his mind is so, like, fortified and disciplined that, like, if psychers try anything around him, any, like, magic stuff, it just doesn't work. Mm. He's not psychic at all. He's just that, st- like, wall mm. it just bounces clean off the deck what uh, okay right they're just like i have nothing to read mm-hmm. yeah and to build up on this discipline right uh they have this thing called the magic pain glove the magic pain magic pain glove, glove. tell me what to do <laughs> yeah um it's basically this full body suit that you wear that stimulates every nerve in your body with pain while simultaneously suppressing the nerves that would make you pass out from it and he wears it for days to help him think Okay. Just just because he can. <laughs> so uh, he's, this he's is our, that he's the that guy. So that's he's so our, disciplined. That's our resident uh, S and M. No, no, it's, it's, <laughs> Primark. No, no, it doesn't it doesn't do anything for him. Mm. It's literally just I can take this pain. This is nothing. Oh. Just yeah. like magic. Why pain not glove. magic pain glove? Tell me what to do. <laughs> like literally, he just <laughs> he. If you like heavy fortification, being like an immovable phalanx type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Construction or just being like that that dependable guy mm-hmm. who just like everyone can go to no matter what and it'll just happen. Iron Fist. That's your legion, right? Yeah. He's probably dead. Mm-hmm. You'll notice, again, it takes a lot to kill a Primarch. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's none so far that are like hard dead, right? Mm-hmm. Um, his, legion is found, his legion found his left hand in a room full of... Of dead space marines. Mm. Right? And they only found his left hand, right? So they assume he was ripped limb from limb because Conrad Kurz in the future saw him fighting hundreds of hundreds of Astartes and being lip, ripped apart because of it. So they assume that's what happened and they took the fist. Like I told you, the, the one fist and now they like venerate on it mm. and scrimshaw on its bones, right? Mm. But when it comes to Primarchs, you never know. He's probably alive, honestly. <clears throat> He's somewhere out there with mm-hmm. just probably built himself like a weird like Iron Man arm. Yeah, probably. Well, he's not machines. He's more buildings. Mm. So he may just not have an arm. He may have just cauterized it and said, I just need one arm <clears throat> to said, build anyway. Okay. And kept it pushing because he's that need, guy. I just need my hammer arm. Mm-hmm. Uh, number eight is the Eighth Legion. The Eighth Legion. Ooh, speaking, I wondered if number eight would be the Eighth Legion. I know, right? Yeah. Um, we mentioned him literally a couple seconds ago. Conrad Kurz, mm-hmm. uh, super traitor. Like, super traitor. Oh, my God, right? Think Batman turned so high the dial exploded. <clears throat> yeah. How do you mean? Um, he's a man, like, he believes... The way his Legion was founded is very interesting because like it, it, there's the way it was founded on Terra and then the way he was found, right? Mm. So he was on this planet called Nostromo, and mm-hmm. it's always night there, and it's always raining. Mm-hmm. And the book does a really good job of capturing that atmosphere, right? Yeah. And it sucks there. Super crime. Like, I mean, it's super bad. So this is your average, like, um, uh, stereotypical cyberpunk planet. It's, like, it's really bad. It's rainy, everyone's night. Skin, yeah. Yeah, everybody's... everyone's skin is super pale, and their eyes are black because they never see the sun, mm. right? And, like, you will just get stabbed to death for no, for no reason. Just why not? Why not, right? And it's just riddled with crime until he decided to do something about it, right? Mm-hmm. And so he has a strong moral compass. He wants to punish crime. But it's not so much a scale of, oh, this is kind of bad. We'll punish it with this to correct it. It's like... Any bad mm-hmm. shall be punished with death. Oh. So, I mean, he just got to work and personally hunted for every and all crimes, be it tripping an old lady to like grand larceny. He would, it was the death sentence for it all. Like, it was so, he was so brutally violent. That's, 
hilarious. All I can imagine is just like <laughs> you like trip an old lady, just like maybe accidentally, maybe for shits and giggles. Who knows, right? <laughs> and then suddenly a 15 foot tall, like basically demigod in like a car, like a mid sized sedan sized armor suit just slices your head off with a chainsword. Oh, it's not that clean of them. Oh. No, 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 no. The sewer grates in Nostromo mm -hmm. were plugged because of his work. Eee. Oh. Yes. Hmm. Any crime was punished like that. And, like, as he rose up, he, like, became the head honcho of the planet and had TVs put in. So his work was always being live streamed to your home. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, like, oh. it's a planet ruled by fear. Funnily enough, um, he saw ending yourself as a crime. Which he'd punish with death. <laughs> like, I'm sorry you tried. You should have succeeded. I'm sorry you tried. You should have succeeded. Yeah. Yeah. That's Conrad Kurz. Right? Damn. Yeah. Okay. So his planet was just afraid and there's no crime anymore because it's like, I don't want to meet him. Yeah. Right? And I so, like having my head. And so that really violent upbringing made him pretty mentally unstable. On top of that, uh, he had some of the emperor's psychic powers, right? So you mm. can see the future <sighs> for short glimpses. Pardon me. But it was uncontrolled and he always got the worst possible future. Mm -hmm. And here's a key thing. He didn't get the future. He got a possibility. That's how it works when you see the future in 40K. Mm -hmm. You don't see the future. You see a future. Yeah. He, being the doomer that he is, just mm -hmm. said, this is what's happening. And made no changes. And made no changes, right? Mm -hmm. So so he would constantly see the worst possible future in the most vivid detail pro possible. Yeah. Like when the when he first met the emperor, he shook his hands and immediately saw him interred on the golden throne. Mm. Like like he shook Rogel Dorn's hand and saw him being ripped apart by Astartes. Oh. Like he saw how they will all die yeah. violently. Mm -hmm. Right? And so and so eh, that made him <laughs> made him even crazier somehow yeah right and then on top of that when the emperor found his legion here's the other half of how they were founded he didn't find like well-disciplined and regimented people he found um emperor he found criminals mm -hmm. he found criminals who had that same sick twisted sense of justice that he had mm. so it was like an echo chamber yeah so it's no wonder he went to chaos right because mm -hmm. towards the end he was utterly unstable like he went back home for like five minutes and saw that since he was gone, everything basically went back to being the same. Yeah. And again, because he's an abject doomer, he just went into orbit and bombarded his planet until it was destroyed. He just said, if I couldn't fix it the first time... It'll never be fixed. It'll never be fixed. And then he just ended his own home planet. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. And um, <clears throat> he, he, like, like nobody else would do anything that crazy, frankly. So he's, he's just that bad. He's just the craziest. Uh, interestingly enough, though, he's one of... The Primarchs were the fewest kills. Because when he got his hands on you, it was so brutal. Planets would hear like, oh, Dorn is coming or Gilliman is coming. And they'd like reinforce and prepare for the battle of their lives. They'd hear Kurz is coming and they'd be like, we're done. <laughs> oh. No, no. No, 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 no. What, would they just like planet crack themselves well well because like here's a great one um, a planet sent forward its defenders to go fight Kurz's fleet right mm -hmm. and then their fleet came back to cheers and adulations and oh my god they beat Kurz they're back right mm -hmm. and as this massive parade is happening beneath them the airlocks opened in the ship and what remained of the crew started raining down on them mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah Oh, yeah. It's raining men. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. It's raining men. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. So it's like, it's like people did not, Curtis did not care. Man, woman, child, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You will fear him. Mm -hmm. Right? And so because of that, nobody ever fought him. Not that many kills, right? He was also a master of infiltration and unconventional warfare, right? Mm -hmm. So that with coupled with the way he was so good at scaring people, very few kills. But one thing happened. Oh, Oh, when that happened, right? It was bad, bad. Yeah. And uh, another thing that he accomplished that's very impressive is <clears throat> when the Horus Heresy happened, Gilliman freaked out and, like, started the emperor, uh, the empire all over again. Like, yeah. as the second thing, Imperium Secundus, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, alone, no legion, just curs, he mm -hmm. managed to screw it all up mm. just by himself. Just because he's so, like, good at that asymmetric, like, unpleasant, like, mind messing with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so he's really good at his job. He's just, he's just, if you like sneaking about, 
unconventional warfare and a bit of like psychological warfare, this is the Legion for you. So if you're the CIA. <clears throat> I, yeah, kind of. <laughs> they win wars by people running once they hear they're nearby. Fear is their weapon. Yeah. And Kurz is dead. He's the first, like, properly dead Primarch. Like, we know he's dead. Yeah. And okay. he's the only Primarch to have been killed by a human. Really? Yes. Like, a regular human assassin made it to him. Mm-hmm. And instead of, like, fighting, he just said, eh, I knew this is how I would die. And just let it happen. Yeah, like Doomer. Big boy Doomer. He, he effectively accepted it, right? Because mm-hmm. I'll be honest, if a Primarch didn't want to die by one of those assassins, if... Yeah. yeah. It, it, it could be over. Like, yes, the book says he charged at her, but, like, he, he, wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't trying. He wasn't trying. He was just like, well, <clears throat> my vision said this is how it's going to happen, mm-hmm. so therefore, this is how yeah, it's going to happen. Not this is a worse possible outcome. No, this is, just, this is what's going to happen. Say love you. Yep. Yeah. And now we move on to the Ninth Legion, right? Which is the Blood Angels... And they're Primarch Sanguinius. Oh, these are the vampire guys, aren't they? Games Workshop is so subtle, aren't they? <laughs> vampire guys. They're loyalists to the core and led by the second hottest Primarch. Mm-hmm. Sanguinius is another one who's really hot, but like not self-insert hot. He's, he's uh, <clears throat> from what I know, like a Dracula <laughs> self-insert. Like this, this guy is our, this is our Dracula. Come and on. I mean, Dracula is either written as like a... Uh, this is like a 15 t- foot tall, like vampire, like horns. This looks like Satan, but with like gray skin and fangs, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or Dracula is written as like bodybuilder, steal your girl. I mean, yeah. Dude, that and uh, Castlevania's Dracula. Oh, oh, it's, oh, he's so good. You have killed my wife. You have one year. Yeah. Oh. You have one year. So Get out. If you haven't seen Castlevania on Netflix, you should watch it before they continue to make a horrible Yeah, Before you cancel your Netflix subscription, watch make sure it. to binge watch all four seasons. Or Yarhar Fiddle DD. <laughs> yes. But um, yeah, like he's just generally attractive, not like self-insert mm-hmm. eye roll attractive, right? So he's, he's Dracula. And funnily enough, a lot of people hold him up as being like, the closest to being an exact mirror of the Emperor. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he, he looks a lot like him. He's one of the larger Primarchs, and he has a lot of his father's best traits instead of just one or two. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a pretty weirdly well-rounded Primarch. It feels like a glitch. Mm. Where they all got, like, one or two. Sanguinius got a lot of them. And mm. he's even better because he's actually, like, benevolent, and he's concerned about the now, which is a, another one of uh, the Emperor's weaknesses. Mm-hmm. He's an eternal undying being he's always looking forward yeah he's always looking for the best possible future so right now it doesn't really matter yeah <clears throat> so he's he's a pretty cool guy to be around actually right mm-hmm. he has massive wings right massive like massive wings he's dracula yeah and they're more like angel wings right and his oh. legion and his legion is kind of like that he's good dracula but they suffer from this thing called the red thirst right mm-hmm. which is basically like in combat like they can like lose it a bit and like you know eat people. they're traditional berserkers he, kind of like vampire gone rogue right and mm-hmm. so to, to like <clears throat> put this together he he like make sure they're like always doing art they're like sculpting they have mm-hmm. to like act together you know like like mm-hmm. just like things to well, calm well down. just like well round yourself yeah like 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 relax. like you can't you can't we can't be known as the psychos well also the rest of the primarchs are the psychos well, we need to be the same and ones. sanguinius had the foresight mm-hmm. right to know that if he didn't get this under control his legion would get the second and 11th legion treatment mm. yeah so he didn't he just he just wanted to keep that Together, he also had the ability to see the future, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, unlike his stupid brother Conrad Kurz, mm-hmm. who saw the worst and said, "This is what must be," he saw the options, oh, <laughs> and accepted them as the options. Yeah, right. He was <clears throat> really powerful. Yeah, like when I say he was well-rounded, he was well-rounded. When Tarot was being sieged, like during the last stand of the Horus Heresy, when they're like charging at the Emperor, right? Mm-hmm. Him and him alone cleaved through four armies. Mm. Like, of, of full-blown space marines. Like, him and him alone fought through them all and made it in to help the Emperor and fought Horus when, like, super-duper buffed by Chaos. Died. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's still very impressive. Yeah. Right? Oh, so he's also dead. dead. <clears throat> we'll get to that. Oh. <laughs> and so he just ripped through that. And, like, this is a really nice piece of art. We'll probably put it up as we're talking of, like, the Emperor and Horus and poor Sanguine. He's just like... Eh the floor mm-hmm. he's not he does not look very good on the floor yeah dead he's mm-hmm. yeah he's pretty yeah. gone but if you like that gothic aesthetic of vampires and being one of the best looking legions out there this is the legion for you you played way too much castlevania yeah oh also one other thing um when he died 
it sent this like sh- psychic shock through his entire legion because mm-hmm. he was kind of what was keeping the red thirst in check. Mm-hmm. And now they have this new one, and I forget the name. It's the black something, right? Mm-hmm. And the black rage is what it's called, mm. right? And um, what happens is it's the red thirst turned up to twenty five. Ah, and instead of just like going berserk, you like look around you and you see Horus. You're Sanguinius, and you see Horus, and he's mm. gonna kill the emperor. So, you, so they have like you a, are like fighting at like full tilt. They have like a weird genetic memory thing mm-hmm. that's just like everything is of, of Sanguinius is like death. Everything reminds me of him. Yeah, literally, <laughs> like 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 it's bad. Your computer doesn't work. Horus is in that computer. Horus. He messed with it. Destroy the computer. Then get the technician. Well, they don't have computers. Yeah, but you get the point, right? Yeah. And and um, to this day, one of their chapter masters, Dante, mm-hmm. his mask is. Dante? Sh- yeah, Dante. Like I said, oh. his mask is Sanguinius' shrieking face as he died. Oh. Yeah. And apparently it works really well mm-hmm. because people will look at that and genuinely go, oh my God, it's Sanguinius. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's back? Mm-hmm. And Dante is a really competent space marine, right? So if you like all those things, this is the Legion for you. Sanguinius is dead. Dead. So dead. He's dead, dead. No, like, 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 oh, Horace beat the brakes off him, right? But his body is perfectly preserved by his chapter mm-hmm. because they like immediately felt him die and like all rushed in. So like they have his body in stasis. Mm. So he looks as he died, right? Mm-hmm. And his spirit is somewhere in the warp. Mm-hmm. We think because like Dante is a very long lived space marine mm-hmm. and he suffers from big boy. Why do I live? Just let me die. Mm-hmm. And so like when he was going through one of these, um, Sanguinius appeared before him and was like, "You're not done yet, buddy. Come on, come on." Oh, yeah. So, so we're not sure if that's a hallucination, like de facto sanguineous, mm-hmm. but it's it's possible his body's preserved. It's, but like he's dead. Right? Well, I mean, this is like a sci-fi universe where people have like definitive souls. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah. you, they, they, they're just running around. Because mm-hmm. if I remember correctly, don't the like the weird elf ones? The big issue they have is they're when they they're, die, the hub snatches. Yeah, their the soul. souls keep getting st- like uh, shot into hell. Yeah, no, no, like their, their souls go where it's supposed to go, and mm-hmm. then Slanesh, god of the hub, just <laughs> before it can get there. No, mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and let's get to the last legion we're gonna cover today, the tenth legion, the tenth known legion. as the Iron Hands. Ten does come after nine. Yeah, it does. Um, their primarch is Ferris Manus, mm-hmm. and uh, he's again one of those super duper loyal primarchs. He's up there with Dorn, the Lion, and like Sangy mm-hmm. as being like the most Sangy. Yeah, Sangy. Sangy. There's a lot of nicknames for them. Okay, Just say Sanguinius. Yeah, Sangy, Sangy doesn't. Ugh, yeah, ugh. he he. You're gonna like him, by the way, mm-hmm. Ferris Manus, or at least you're gonna like his legion because it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one of the few primarchs where his legion and him disagree on things. Because mm. usually it's like, yes, father, I will do as you say, mm. <laughs> but not here. His right? legion is like, uh, they just. Thing? It feels like they misread it, but basically, mm-hmm. um, at his core, he wants to get things done. He doesn't want to philosophize. Like, no, why are yeah. we talking? Let's just do it. Yeah. Like, no, like, what, what, no, what are we doing here? What are right? we doing? Let's just finish um, up. Yeah, and he's a huge, huge forge master, right? Mm-hmm. Like, he he can craft anything. Mm-hmm. Him and Fulgrim are like super best buds, right? Yeah. And like when Fulgrim first met him, Fulgrim was you know doing the whole Fulgrim thing of I'm so hot. Mm-hmm. And so perfect at everything. Mm-hmm. I could forge the best thing. I got the Emperor's skill. Yeah. And then Ferris Manus was like, um, what? What? And so they challenged each other to a forge off. Mm-hmm. Forge off. A forge. Yeah, and, and Fulgrim made this massive war hammer that like could crush a mountain. Yeah. Just by swinging it, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Ferris Manus made this elegant sword that could cut through anything with precision cuts. And they both looked at what the other made mm-hmm. and immediately went, yours is better. Mm. And then they swapped weapons, and they've been bros since. That's kind of cool. Yeah, they've been like super bros since. Like Fulgrim mm-hmm. and Ferris Manus, best buddies. Yeah. Best buddies. But he's loyal, Fulgrim and traitor. Mm-hmm. Right? And interesting, Fer- Ferris Manus has uh, iron hands. Hence the Legion. Um, one of the things he did before uh, his dad found him is he pummeled a dragon with these. Oh. <laughs> and uh, its scales had this living metal that like coated his hands. Mm-hmm. And ever since, they've just been metal. He's just had... Iron so hands. you'll see him in the forge, literally just like manipulating it with his hands, because mm. it doesn't affect them. And he doesn't he's, usually use weapons; he'll just like hit you with a fist. And it's all well, because like, he's got a literal iron fist. Yeah, but he does use the hammer that Fulgrim gave him, though. So that's mm. pretty neat. It's um, just like this is my best buds thing. Yeah, so he's all about like machinery and like augmenting yourself, but it, he only he believes in enhancing the strength of the flesh. Mm-hmm. Don't rely completely on bionics and mechanical augmentations, mm-hmm. right? But currently. 
his legion's doing the exact opposite of that. Okay. They're, they're like, they're like, oh, my arm's cut off. Wonderful. I now have a better one. So he's like, he's like cyberpunk. Make the human experience better. He's like cyberpunk driven to a reasonable level. Mm -hmm. Like only do what you really need to, to augment what you already do. Mm -hmm. And his legion is like cyberpunk where they're just like, I have flesh. Let's get rid of that. What if I didn't? Mm -hmm. Like, he's the type where he's like, what if I just, like, you know, adjusted my spine so I could take shock better? And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. God, yes. I'd do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> and then, and then like, his legion's like, yeah, but what if I just cut my torso out and put it in a massive machine robot to fight to the death? They're like, what if I just had, what if I just had the Cy the Sandevastan from Cyberpunk Edge Runners? No, that's actually, no, that, the, one of their units is basically a Sandevastan. Really? A, it's a torso of a space marine mm -hmm. in, like, this huge mech. Mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. So he'd probably take a look at his legion. One of the few who'd look at his legion today and go, uh, uh, well, "What are you doing? Can you not? What are you guys doing? This is what I taught you, right? Um, so if you like big, massive machinery, constant improvement in tech, or just think the flesh is weak, the modern iron hands are for you, right? I would like them a lot. Ferris Manus is dead. Oh, well, super dead. That's right? unfortunate. Uh, he's another one of those product. Uh, Primarchs, who's definitely dead, he was beheaded by his best bro, Fulgrim, in battle. Maybe he should have just replaced his spine with a sand devastan. Well, yeah, no, Fulgrim ripped his head off, though, with a sword. Yeah, and, but if your spine is made of metal and, and uh, makes you walk through time... Yeah, shut up. <laughs> and his head was offered to Horus as a gift, which, frankly, horrified Horus. He's just like, why would you do that? No, I didn't... No, why, no, no, why, why, no, why? I didn't want his head. Kill him, but like, don't bring back my brother's head. No, what are we doing? It's my bro's no, head. No, what, what the heck? What, what kind of show are we running here, right? Apparently, Fulgrim still has his body and he clones it, trying to convince it to join Chaos. Mm. And it never joins Chaos, so he always kills it. Because mm. he does, Fulgrim feels bad about it. Because, like, Fulgrim didn't want to kill him. Yeah. Like, they were fighting, fighting, and he bested um, Ferris Manus, and mm -hmm. he was looking down at him. And he looked down for any sign of, like, will you join me, bro? Come on. Hey, bud, this please, super cool. And he just saw hatred in his eyes. Mm. Like, Ferris Manus was, if, if I could stand, I would rip you limb from limb right now. Yeah, like, that's why where, are you doing this? Yeah, like, that's where Ferris Manus was. And, like, while well, he was just looking at that and being like, oh, fuck, I've ruined this, right? His hand, like, automatically raised and, like finish the job mm -hmm. so chaos basically did it Not yeah chaos him. did it for but him. like full grim regrets it and he's constantly like, come on come on, come on mm -hmm. please 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 bro right and so those are the first 10 legions of space marines there'll be another video coming with the last 10 right yeah because this video is already like an hour long oh, full yeah. of uh and again i'm condensing this so much but like this this is how i got into warhammer it was it was mm -hmm. these primarchs these stories that like got me interested right yeah it was like the 20 minute videos on each individual prime arc mm -hmm. i remember because i remember watching you watch those videos and then yeah. i'd yeah you know. so so if i can get more people into this and if it helps you get out there and touch grass or more like touch dice and plastic figures and paint yeah this is this is, there yeah. are definitely a lot of like you can take this out and people will like hey, you can this, go this, you this, can this. go to local game shops support your local game shops and there are a bunch of people who There's will always, help you out like oh, yeah. strategizing in the the tabletop game yeah. or just and there are people who tell you far better stories than even i can right now yeah because I'm, I'm like cramming this together mm -hmm. i really recommend if any of the first 10 stood out to you like look into them more or like just let me know which ones you'd like to hear more about because mm -hmm. i really like condensed their stories down a lot yeah and he has a lot of warhammer knowledge in his head i gotta use it somehow yeah right? it's something that gets me to touch grass so in the next video we'll cover the last 10 primarchs and uh maybe we'll do one on biggie because he needs his he needs his own video almost right yeah and he's I'm huge isn't yeah, he he's, he's a whole thing um and i'm excited for the next one because we get to cover my favorite legion 13th the 13th bobby g Ugh. yeah so in the next episode, we'll cover the last 10 legions and uh, we'll see you there on that episode of the podcast.